So once you've unbagged your range of accessories that come with the kit, uh, you'll see them as here. So we have the filter, which I've touched on. Very important you connect that to the intake. You have a range of C and Y connectors. So the Y connectors are for the parallel designs. Um, uh, the uh, C or V connectors for our series pump. We have some O-rings for mounting the pump and some screws. A little uh, bleed orifice. This is um, very important if you need to dump head pressure in the system. Um, the pressure will not leak back through the valves in the pump. So this is a Lee uh, orifice and it just enables the pressure to bleed back when you've got it connected in a, a certain way and we can touch on that later. And we have a range of um, pneumatic connectors. So this just really enables you to connect up to things like pressure sensors and other parts very quickly and easily. So to add the pumps to the driver board, I recommend having a flat bladed screwdriver readily available. And you might want to uh, have a look at a tube cutter. This basically enables you to cut the tube to whatever lengths you need and connect up quickly and easily. In the kit, you will also have found uh, this connector. So this is specifically for our ultra slim pump. So if you haven't selected that model, this won't be needed. But if you have, it connects straight onto the discharge of the pump. If you push it on firmly, you'll know it forms a nice tight seal and then you can mount the pump directly onto your development kit and begin your testing. The other options we have are with our parallel design. So with a parallel design, we are basically taking the flow from the bottom cavity and linking it to the flow from the top cavity. And for that, we will use one of these Y connectors. So what this is doing is connecting between ports one and three and ports two and four and basically it's just linking the two cavities in parallel as you can see here. So this gives you um, higher flow but lower differential pressures. The important thing to note is that a series and parallel pump are actually manufactured differently so you can't convert a series to a parallel design just by changing the connections on the port and I do advocate reading the data sheets on each individual pump prior to connection. So in the kit, you'll also find one of these. This is a, a V or C connector. So this is for connecting up any series design pumps. And this is where you connect the lower cavity to the top cavity to create a two-stage pump. And as you can see here, we've connected between ports two and ports four using this. And then ports one is your discharge and port three is your intake. Finally, if you've selected the HP series or high pressure series pump, this was designed as a series design straight from the get-go. So what we did here, we actually made the connection between the lower cavity and the upper cavity actually in the body of the pump. So this was specifically designed for things like um, microfluidic handling where they typically need higher pressures for moving viscous fluids through tight geometries. Okay, so now we have all the pumps connected up as you require. Um, having read the data sheets, it's now time to add them to the driver board. So once you have your pump connected up with the, uh, the right tubing, it's now time to connect it to the driver board. So the kit comes with these small little screws and O-rings. Now you need to attach the O-rings to the screws and then push that through the eyelet of the pump and then attach the O-ring to the other side. So here's one I prepared earlier. As you can see, we have the O-rings and the screws all attached, so it's now ready to be added to the board. You'll notice there's a range of different mounting holes on the board. The trick here is to align the pump to the right number of holes so the flexi tab aligns neatly with the uh, main driver that you can see in the middle there. So take your flat bladed screwdriver, just tighten those down. and it's firmly attached to the board. Now you need to attach the flexi into the driver here. So having large fingers, I quite often find it's easiest just to prise the driver from the board. You'll see the protective covers on. You just need to flick the protective cover off just by holding the tabs and you'll see it slides away fairly easily. So while I have the general purpose driver off, I'd just like to draw your attention to another um, SPM connector that we have underneath the general purpose driver. The reason why we have it mounted here is 
that you can't run the SPM when the general purpose driver is in position. So this does enable you to connect an SPM in place of the general purpose driver because the SPM has its own driver board and run that using something like the dial and the main connection from the laptop. So the next thing you want to do is just reattach the driver to the main motherboard. This is pokey yoke, so it can only go back in one position. And all you need to do is line the pins up and press firmly and it's connected down. Next you want to do is open up the tab so you can apply the flexi, either use your flat bladed screwdriver or some tweezers, then take the flexi, insert in, push as far as it will go. And then once that's in, just push the brown tab forward and that locks it into position, it's nice and firm. Finally, what you need to do is take the protective cover. As I mentioned, there's some sensitive electronic components there that you wouldn't want to short circuit. And some of those do run a little hot. So this is really to protect you and the driver. And then just click that back end down into place and we are good to get going. Okay, now we've connected the pump and driver together. What I've done is taken my tube cutter and cut a few small lengths of tube. One to connect up the intake filter. As mentioned, this is really important to, to stop any uh, particles and debris being dragged into the pump. It's the same for any pump, you're always gonna need a filter. And I've also cut another small length just to connect up to this syringe for the purpose of this demonstration. So, um, as you can see, I've downloaded the uh, disk pump app from the resources page uh, that's highlighted in our uh, quick start guide. And I've taken the USB cable, connected into the laptop, and I'm now going to insert that into the development kit. So when I put that into the development kit, you'll see the power indicator light come on and you'll see this green flashing status LED light. So this is green, everything's good and we're ready to proceed. The important thing to note is that the driver or the general purpose driver comes pre-programmed um, so that it automatically um, is set to be controlled via the dial or the potentiometer here. So what you'll see is as I turn the dial, you're gonna see the LED start to light up. So this is your power indicator and how much power you're applying to the pump. So as I rotate the dial, you'll see these little LEDs start to come on. And this is indicating the amount of power going to the pump. And as I apply power to the pump, by turning the dial, you'll see the syringe barrel start to move. And I can start and stop the syringe barrel by just basically turning the pump on and off with different power levels. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to turn that all the way up to maximum. So it's, at the moment it's running at about one watt. So if I turn it all the way up to one watt, you see it move very rapidly. As you can see, the pump is completely silent and vibration free. So by comparison, I have a small motor driven diaphragm pump. So what I'm going to do is just apply some power to this by hooking up the terminals. As you can see, there's a lot of noise, a lot of vibration. Even if I was to remove the pump from the table, still a lot of noise and vibration. And by comparison, this pump is still operating at maximum power and it's completely silent and vibration free.